आगे using this mic for a few minutes. I forgot my uh, mic and I, I'm going to go get it during the announcement. So, But uh, for the welcome this morning, I wanted to welcome all of you. This is kind of an odd arrangement here. We got a clump over here, a clump over here, and a clump up here. But anyway, that's it. well, that's true. I forgot my apologies. No matter what day it is, assigned seats are important. So we welcome you to our service this morning here on Christmas Sunday. Wanted to mention the uh, flowers, the beautiful flowers on the altar were given by Jerry and Carolyn Hanks in memory of D. Hanks. I wanted to share with you this morning a couple thoughts I had about doing this service. I thought, okay, how can we make uh, Christmas Sunday special? So I came up with an idea, and the cold weather kind of knocked it out, but I, what I thought we should have done is drag the Christmas tree back to the fellowship hall, and then put chairs around it, and all of us wear our new Christmas pajamas. I just thought that would be a nice new church tradition. But then when the weather turned cold, I knew I wouldn't be able to convince anybody to do that this morning. So I had to give up on my dream, and uh, so we're going to have just a traditional service of sorts this morning. But we are glad that you're here, and we look forward to all the Lord has to share with us this morning as we lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ together. So at this time, while I go get my mic, I'm going to turn it over to Scott for the rest of our announcements. <laughs> Good morning. Merry Christmas. As always, we want to start out by getting a record of attendance. So if you would fill out the booklet and pass it to the outside of the aisle, we'd like to have a, reckon, a reckoning of who is here this morning and who, well, not who is not. We'll know that by who's not in the book. If we have any visitors this morning, we have a visitors tag that we'd ask you to put your name on. Um, it's in the front of the pew in front of you as well. In the bulletin, you'll notice a few announcements. The food collection has changed from stuffing to mac and cheese and black-eyed peas for the Warren Food Bank. If you purchased a poinsettia, you can pick it up right after services this morning. And then Tuesday morning, December 27th at 10.30, the worship committee will need help taking down all of the decorations and putting them up. And next week and the following week, uh, Reggie Rogers will be here to sing and speak to the congregation while Randy is off on vacation. So he will he will be, uh, <laughs> he's over here laughing, so I guess he's ready for a vacation. And then, uh, importantly, the office is closed tomorrow, the 26th, and January 2nd. Are there any other announcements? If there's no announcements, um, I'll go into the call to preparation. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's from Romans 12, 2. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to 
celebrate the birth of our Savior right here on Christmas morning. I thank you for those that uh, were willing to give up their usual Christmas morning plans and be here with us today. We thank you for the opportunity to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask your blessings upon this service and everything we do. May Jesus Christ receive all the honor and the glory and the praise, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. Twenty twenty two is an unusual year, a year that Christmas Day falls on a Sunday. So today we are no longer in the Advent season. We are celebrating the birth of our Savior. We already recognize hope, peace, joy, love, and light that prepared us during the Advent season for his birth. So today we'll, we will light just the Christ candle to recognize the birth of our Savior. Jesus came to save the world from sin and restore our relationship with God. Today begins our journey with Jesus as he begins to reveal through us that he is the Savior of the world. Today, our Christ candle is also the candle of sharing because we are called to share the true message of Christmas, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world. Our scripture is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, we thank you for this Christmas day as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. We are reminded of your love for us as you allowed your Son to take the form of a man and experience all the trials of humanity that eventually led to his death on the cross. Thank you for your amazing love for us, even when we are unfaithful to you. Thank you most of all for the most precious gift of all, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. As we continue in our worship, our opening hymn is Joy to the World. Let's stand together as we sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith this morning. It's number 889. We'll read it responsively. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. As we always do, we want to share our concerns and our joys. Is there anyone with any concerns this morning? I guess the concerns of broken pipes are, are pretty much over. We know if we had them or not. Um, my joy is I did not have a broken pipe. Does any With no concerns, does anybody have any joys this morning? other than being Christmas. No joys, okay. Well, we do have birthdays coming up, so we'll go through the birthdays for January. Uh, the seventh is Bryn Huddle. If I call your name, uh, stand up. Uh, Lori Cox on the ninth. Carolyn Hanks on the 11th. Patty Johnson on the 13th. Mine on the 15th, Jim Griffin on the 19th, Max Clay on the 21st, Harold Woodrum on the 29th, and Willie Gibson on the 30th. So join with me in the litany. We thank God for the gift of life. We thank God for those people whose birthdays we celebrate this coming month. Life is precious. We are grateful for all these precious people. May God bless them in his time and throughout all the days of their lives. We are glad that God has brought us together in this world. We are enriched by those who come into our lives, our families, our church, and our community. May we always be open to seeing God in others. May we always follow God's leading into the future. Thanks be to God for the gift of life. Thanks be to God for the gift of life. Amen. And the anniversary is in January um, as well. Paul and Stacy Richards on the 4th. Jerry and Jolinda Loeb on the 5th. Me and Karen on the 13th. Jan and Jerry Stewart on the 17th. Then Gary and Sharon Warnick on the 24th. Pastor. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this special day, for the opportunity to come together and lift our hearts and voices in praise and worship to you this morning as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. We thank you for this special time together. We come into your presence now in prayer, and we recognize that we are not worthy of your amazing love for us. So we humbly come before your throne. We confess to you all of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Prepare our hearts to be the disciples that you called us to be. And Lord, our hearts are burdened this morning for those in need among us, for those requests on our hearts, as well as the unspoken requests 
we carry to you as well. We also lift up those listed in our bulletins. We thank you and praise you that you are our great physician. You know and understand these needs even before we bring them before your throne. Your Holy Spirit is already at work, moving among us, touching and healing hearts and lives. So we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to share these burdens with you this morning. And now, as Jesus taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward for a morning offering. And let's bow together as we pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all your many blessings upon us, especially on this Christmas Day. We thank you for this opportunity to celebrate you. We thank you for walking with us moment by moment, day by day. And so we thank you now for this opportunity to give back to you. Bless these, our tithes and offerings, and may they be used to bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
we remain standing for our hymn of praise, I just wanted to say a word of thank you uh, for Linda coming and sharing her gift with us. Um, as many of you know, going a while back, uh, Verna, her sister that looks a little bit like her, um, started uh, coming here and singing, and then Linda would come whenever she was here and join her, and the two of them share together, and so now we have Linda back with us this morning, and uh, she's been working in the music ministry at the Baptist Church, and so we are very thankful to have her share, share her gifts with us this morning. Amen. So our hymn of praise, O Come All Ye Faithful, we'll sing verses 1 and 3, and then the first Noel, verses 1 and 5. You may be seated. And now we're blessed to have Linda come back and share with us again. This is one of my all-time favorite Christmas hymns, O Holy Night.
birthday. It's kind of a special Sunday being Christmas, and it's nice to be honored Amen. by someone to come and, and honor us and bless us with their singing. We appreciate it very Amen. much. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand for the honor of the reading of God's Word? Today's reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 4 through 6. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except their home, in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do, do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out about the, went out about among the villages teaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Open our spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today is the final installment in my uh, Advent Christmas series called Are You Missing Christmas? Our Christmas story began when Joseph left Nazareth took Mary and went to Bethlehem, fled to Egypt, and then came home to Nazareth. It's a pretty stunning statement that Jesus makes here in our scripture. Jesus was amazed at his hometown people and their lack of faith. I'm sure through his own growing up experience in Nazareth, or especially if he talked with his mother, he already knew that the village had been nursing this belief problem for the last 30 years. Even though Nazareth had heard the story that Mary and Joseph told about his miraculous birth, that the angels delivered important messages from God, the people of the village refused to believe. They were far too familiar with Mary and Joseph and their families to believe that God might be using them. The impact of this story? Well, most of us are familiar with Jesus, as were the folks in Nazareth. If you've been in church very long, you know a lot of the Bible stories. You've sung the songs. You maybe even have memorized some scripture. But there's still a huge gulf of faith and trust that needs a bridge, a bridge that only you and I can build. This Christmas, we have to ask ourselves the question, would Jesus be amazed at our faith or amazed at our lack of faith? Would it be yet another Christmas filled with too much to do, too much food, too many expenses? Or could this be the Christmas that we take the opportunity and use our faith like Mary as she responded, I am the Lord's servant. I heard this story and I thought it was appropriate for this morning. A woman was doing her last minute Christmas shopping at a crowded mall. She was tired of fighting the crowds. She was tired of standing in lines. And she was tired of fighting her way down long aisles to look for a gift that when she got there had been sold out days before. So as she's leaving the mall, her arms are full, are full of bulky packages. She goes to the elevator and when the door opens, the elevator is packed. The occupants of the elevator grudgingly tighten their ranks to allow a small space for her and her load. As the doors close, she blurted out, whoever is responsible for this whole Christmas thing ought to be arrested, strung up, and shot. A few others around her kind of nodded their heads or grunted in agreement. 
Then someone from the back of the elevator, there came a single voice that said, don't worry, they already crucified him. Kind of speaks a strong message about what Christmas is really all about. A lot of this Christmas series that I have done has been about considering simplifying Christmas. It's about spending less, doing less, and as a result, enjoying the real Christmas more. How can we share the real message so that people will see a difference in us? A difference when it comes to how we spend this holiday. Your family and friends might very well stand up and take notice if you simply sat down and took some downtime, even though you had people to see, and places to go, and things to do. If you intentionally schedule the time of personal worship and reflection, you'd probably draw more attention to that than you would to any huge decorative Christmas display. If you make it a family tradition to give at least one major gift to missions, instead of to just gifts, either worldwide missions or your favorite local charity that will make a mark on somebody's memory. Upon reflection, it may never be easier than at Christmas to share a message that many people may know bits and pieces of but don't really understand the impact of the story. Christmas is the right time for the right message. Now, Nazareth didn't see itself as the right place for the home of the Messiah. Interestingly enough, uh, part of the meaning of Nazarene is despised one. The village did not have the best of reputations. If you'll remember in John chapter 1, Nathanael meets Jesus for the first time and he immediately puts his foot in his mouth and says, Nazareth, how can anything good come from there? Even Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah would be despised and even contemptible. Psalm 22 drives the same point home. It's interesting how our society today works. I've seen this in a number of Christmas movies over the last few years. Young people grow up thinking their hometown uh, has little chance of producing greatness. They think they have to leave to find greatness elsewhere. And yet the real truth is, is that at any place, at any time, there can come a great leader. And this morning, it's important to know that this place, our place, happens to be the right place for the right message at Christmas. Ask yourself the question, can anything good come from Wildwood? Who else is going to bring this community the good news of Jesus Christ. Frankly, most everyone else is far too busy at Christmas, and at some point it's important to realize that the best person to reach our family is us. To reach our circle of friends, it's us. It's much easier to think, well, that's somebody else's responsibility. I have too much to do. And yet, God challenges us to recognize our calling and recognize it's not somebody else's responsibility. He has called us. We are here in this community, inside our circle of friends and family, armed with years of relationships. We have an excellent opportunity to bring the message of love and trust and faith 
in Jesus Christ. So it's up to us to find a way to get that message into our area of influence. It's always good to include a spiritual side to your family celebrations, your family traditions, prayers of faith, even a simple reading of the Christmas story as part of your gift exchange. And when the afternoon grows quiet, this afternoon, for example, on Christmas Day, instead of checking on the outcome of your favorite football team this afternoon, how about taking the opportunity to have a conversation with someone about their faith? You might have doubts about your ability to deliver the message, or just the opposite, you might be as confident as the prophet Elijah. But what's interesting is, each of us in our own ways, with our own skills, has been gifted and charged by God to deliver the news of Christmas. Mary and Joseph accepted the challenge trusted God, and found the miracle they were promised. Although they paid a tremendous price for accepting the task God gave them, enduring the shame and the scorn, hundreds of miles of difficult and dangerous travel, and then the rest of Nazareth, it seems, endured none of their discomfort, but they would not accept the challenge of faith. As a result, they missed more than simply Christmas. They missed everything. They missed an opportunity to know God. As I close, I want to share one more little story. I read this about a man named Pete Wynn. He was in his local post office just a few days before Christmas. And at the end of his transaction a very helpful postal manager smiled and said the standard line, is there anything else I can help you with today? Pete quipped, can you help me pay for Christmas? Without missing a beat, she replied, he already paid for it. And shocked at that glimpse of the real Christmas right there in the post office, Pete Wynn heard that truth. And we, when he collected his thoughts, he replied, he certainly did. So what do we do to share the real message of Christmas? We are here at the right time and the right place. And it is completely up to, up to us. The opportunity to share life-changing faith with those around us. Christmas finding faith. It's the kind of faith that takes place what you believe, taking that belief and putting it into action. And it can be all kinds of different actions. No two spiritual encounters are the same. But the final decision to take that step and share our faith belongs to us. Take the journey of faith that Mary and Joseph took and you'll find their miracle as you find your own miracle. If you can't believe and you can't trust and you're not willing to share, then unfortunately you may suffer the same fate as the people of Nazareth who simply never overcame their lack of faith. If you can trust, you can put your faith in Christ and then you'll find the same truth that Mary found as she journeyed into the unknown future of faith. Nothing, the angel told her, is impossible with God. God is at work this Christmas changing lives one at a time, one opportunity at a time, one sharing at a time, one message at a time. And he gets that message out in surprising ways if we open our hearts 
and allow Him to use us. So this Christmas, don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution. God's solution. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word, for the important reminder we face as we walk with you moment by moment, day by day. So instead of Christmas being a time of hustle and bustle and too many things to do, too many people to please, too many gifts to buy, may we take the opportunity to use this time to share the story of faith, the story from the scripture or our own story, in order that others may experience the true message of Christmas. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we close our service, our closing hymn, Emmanuel, we'll sing that chorus through one time. Let us stand as we sing together.